to my mom, hit a bell, like this video. What's going on? We have a makeshift shade, literally. It is so hot and bright onto the phone that the glare is crazy. So I literally put some child art on top of the phone. So what is this today? Hi guys, I am Hot Mess Ness, MUA, otherwise known as Vanessa. And today we're going on a little journey. Sneak peek, just letting you know. We get to see a baby today, a baby. Uh, I have been absent from my channel as of recently. And I don't think it's been any secret here on my channel that I am constantly like, I'll do really good with uploads and then I'll be like, I just feel me. Um, some people call that de like depression and anxiety. I kind of think that maybe it's a sign that I'm going in the wrong direction. So I don't know if you guys have been into like the secret at all or any of those kind of choose your own destiny ways of thinking. You know, the way you think is how you live. If you live positively, let's get our little uh, art sunshade going on here. If you think positive thoughts, positive things happen, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and I remember doing this workbook that was really cool. It was called The Artist's Way. And it, it talked about you know, finding your path, getting rid of your little internal demons that stop you and tell you you're not good enough, that tell you you're not. And I've done these processes um, when I was acting. And it, and it helps with all kinds of things. But it was really to unblock the inner artist, your artist child, right? And one of the like key points is... If it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. And it's not... Do you like this? Okay. And it's not saying that if something's hard or... That's not it. But you should be going, like, with your stream. Not everything shouldn't be against the stream. Now, we're not saying that what you're doing shouldn't be work or enjoyable but if you're not enjoying any of the process of whatever you're doing it's probably not the right path and I have been feeling off and on like that about YouTube for a long time I get frustrated in like feeling like I'm not good enough or my content is you know even on the videos that I try the very hardest and I think they're really good it's not gonna make me YouTube famous um, and I could think of all the reasons why and I've even tried in the past to combat those reasons but at the end of the day as far as makeup goes I don't want to be in the rat race anymore I don't want to have to buy product that I don't really want to get a review on it. and I've never been first to a review but I thought that was part of my downfall I thought if I got better at that, and you know, I don't wanna do that at all. I don't wanna have to be the first person in store at a Morphe store to get a review up that day for a possibility of growth. And nothing um, wrong with those people that do, because that's beautiful, um, as long as they want to. And I think that they do, I think that they really do. But let's be real, I have five kids, I have a job. The nearest Morphe store is hours away. It's just, that's so much work for what? A couple extra hundred views and then maybe over time it would make me bigger? Maybe, maybe not. So I don't know. I'm just at the point where I know I love making YouTube content. But I don't know that I'm going to stay on um, the makeup train. 
Um, I'm not saying I'm ditching it forever because those of you that are already subscribed to my channel obviously have found me through makeup and I still love it and um, I'm sure I'll still want to play with it but please be patient with me while I try to figure out what exactly I want to do because I feel like if I'm doing things that I want to do it'll be better it'll be better for you guys for me everybody will like I'll be inspired and I'll make content regardless and as of late I'm making YouTube videos because I feel like I have to so I don't lose the attention of the people that I do have so well, this is part of that we're gonna see how that goes I'm sorry we're on a bumpy road and it sucks Ugh. so where are we going right now and what is the story with the baby okay a little personal I'm gonna get a little personal here I have sisters and uh, and I love my sisters and this is only with one sister. The other sister has been missing in action. And not really missing. Some people have known where she is. I have not. Um, and my sister has a drug problem. And, um, and it's very much a family problem because it has stemmed from generations. And I don't not understand. I do that's part of the problem. I do understand, but when kids are involved, I always get hypersensitive. Why? Because I was one of those kids. So it brings me back to a very vulnerable place and I get overly sensitive and overly emotional about things that aren't me. Those children aren't me. Um, so I tend to, I've been in a funk, okay? So since I found out my sister was pregnant, it's part of the thing, I talked about it before, like cutting out family members, and, and this was all stemmed from that. So um, I blocked my grandparents. I have just been in a very mm, place. So I'm trying to let some of that go, and baby was born on the 7th, and he's small, but he's pretty healthy and then he had some issues so I don't know exactly all the issues but I am going to see him he's no longer in an ICU my sister has been taking care of him she's doing a pretty good job so we're gonna go meet her we're gonna see the baby and um, it should be it should be cool baby's fucking rock so if you didn't know I am the baby whisperer. I love babies. Babies are my jam. Once they hit about seven, eight, then I kind of go, I don't know what you are anymore. You're not a sweet little baby. Now you're like a little man child. And then they become teenagers and that, that I don't know what is. I have two of them and I don't know what they are. So there's the intro at eight minutes and 26 seconds coming with me to see some baby and you know along the way we'll talk about some of my mental issues we all have them whatever all right guys I'll check back in when we get closer to baby So visit is over, I'm on my way home. I didn't put my sister on, and there's a reason. I realize that she doesn't realize that I hadn't seen her in three years. And she's like, wait, I was at home, I was with mom, I went to school and blah, 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 and I go, I know, and I still didn't see you during that time because 
I tend to separate um, with our family and whatnot. I'm, you know, make sure I do the big things, holidays, a little visit here and there. Uh, and the person I am in contact with most is my big sister. And in the summertime, we would swim and barbecue and whatever. But this past year has been totally different because I work five days a week. And there's that glare again. Where's my art? There we go. Um, so because, so because I work five days a week, <clears throat> it's a lot harder when my day is off or a Wednesday or Thursday to go visit. But, um, you know, people get busy and life happens. But we, what had started all of this many years ago was we decided that once a month we were going to host dinner on a Sunday at a different person's house. And I did the first one, and the second one was my big sister, and the third one was supposed to be my little sister, and it was all during the very first time, like when her and her ex-husband split up, and they did a family intervention and all this stuff. So anyway, it felt like uh, a little inappropriate to be like, hey, I haven't seen you in three years. Come on my YouTube channel. <laughs> but it was nice. I sat there, and I held the baby for like two hours, and I changed his little poopy butts, and I held him and cuddled him, and he's adorable. And I think she's going to be fine. She has the right mindset. I mean, we didn't talk like, it's not like a counseling session. It's not like we sit down and go, how do you feel about all this? No, I just ask her, you know, how it's going and what do you think? And we just tell stories like you do with friends that you haven't seen in a long time. We just kind of fall back into and during that time, you kind of gauge people. Are you on the, the kind of right mind path? Um, because sometimes if you come at people about their addiction or blah, 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 they're going to be defensive or they're going to give you mouth service, um, lip service. They're going to just tell you what they think you want to hear. And I don't want that for her. I want her to be able to talk to me. I also told her if something goes down um, and you don't think you can handle whatever, drop your baby off at my house. But I also know how addicts work. <laughs> at least in the case of my family members and speed. It's usually like they'll do it once. They'll be clean for a long time. And then something will happen and they'll do it once and think that they have it on lock. And then they don't. And then it'll happen a little bit more, a little bit more. They think they have it under control and eventually they don't and then they bounce. So Logically, I know that if she starts using again, I won't be the phone call that is made. But she may actually be done this time. She may not. I don't know. You never know with people. You know, sometimes it's like a little voice in their head. Sometimes it's a real big rock bottom. I just know that we have different kind of thought processes and the kind of people that my sister connects with. My sister likes to be a savior um, and be helpful. She likes to be very, very helpful. And sometimes that might mean that she's helpful to someone that is in more of need than she is. And that might be in a circle of drug addicts. She might be the drug addict that has the, the most logical brain or I, you know what I mean? And there are different people that can be like that, that aren't addicts. So, um, I just hope right now she can take the time to focus on her and the baby. And I'm not worried that she's going to go out and use tomorrow or even a month. My thing would be her in a year or, you know, when things go back to normal and then things get hard because you got to work a lot of hours because you're a single mom or whatever. But she does have a large support system. She's living with my mom. My grandma's still involved. Um, I just find a hard balance in between support and enabling. And my family tends to lean towards more enabling than they are with support. So I'm going to do my best to be supportive from where I am. I am not right down the street, so I can't go save the day. Uh, and that's probably a good thing. So, anyways, 
you guys got a little insight into, you know, what's, what's really like the real meat and potatoes of what's been going on in my life right now. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already and you made it this far, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, I'm sure this saga will continue and we'll talk more about other things that people deal with in this world. And um, who knows where this will go from here, but thanks for watching, guys. I think I'm gonna go in Ulta right now. I wanna go look at the Anastasia Foundation. So there's a segue for you. Anyway. I love you guys, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye. Don't forget, you can subscribe down here, and for more videos, click over here. Possibly there. There's places to click. Click them. Click them all.